Hello and welcome to this Revenue Operations Power Hour with me, RevOps Charlie. And in today's workshop, we are going to be looking at the dark funnel and understanding what your customers are talking about when they speak to their peers and colleagues outside of your field of view. Now, if this is your first RevOps Charlie Power Hour, I'll take a couple of minutes and just explain what they are, why I run them and how they work. For me personally, when I am trying to learn something, I want to learn from someone that is just a little bit further along and is actually carrying out that activity in their own job. And secondly, I want to learn really quickly. I don't want to be stuck in some four day workshop. Uh, tell me what I need to know so that I can get on with it. And in order to do that, I want to learn through real work using my own career as a way of doing that. So help me to translate what you're teaching me into my own job. And that's what we're going to be doing in this power hour. It's going to be very quick. It's going to run over just 60 minutes. And during that, you are going to be doing some work, you and your team. I'm going to be guiding you, but you are going to be doing some work. And the benefit of that is that at the end of the 60 minutes, you are going to have a specific outcome that is relevant to your company and what you're trying to do. My promise to you is that in 60 minutes time, you will have uncovered at least five locations where your buyers go to learn and you'll have kicked off a plan to listen and to learn from them. Specific outcomes relevant to your business. So this is how the hour is going to break down. I'm going to spend five minutes doing the introduction, which is what we're doing now. And then I'll spend about 10 minutes walking you through the dark funnel. What is it? And helping you to understand how you can embrace that for the success of your own organization. Then I'll introduce the first task and you'll then have 15 minutes of working time amongst your team. Now, during this time, uh, I'll be here, but I won't be speaking. You'll be actually getting on as if I was in the room uh, comparing a workshop for you. Uh, then I'll check in with you and introduce the second task. And you'll then have another 15 minutes when you'll be working as a team on the second uh, objective. And then I'll come back on again and wrap up. And that will be the end of our power hour. Now, I mentioned a workshop, I mentioned your team. For you to get the most out of this session, you need to be working. And I would very much recommend that you're not doing that on your own. So if you're watching this and you're on your own at your desk, I'd probably recommend pausing and getting the right people in your team into a room and then running this as a workshop with three or four people. I would suggest putting me onto a big screen if you've got one in that room. I would recommend having a flip chart or a whiteboard on the side, maybe with some sticky notes and some pens, and with your team getting ready to discuss because you're going to have two 15-minute workshops when the collaboration amongst your team is where you're going to get the real value. Now, before you start this workshop, I'm going to assume a couple of things. I'm going to assume you know who your ideal customer profile is. Ideal customer profile is the type of account or organization that you are selling into. Are you selling into a specific country, into a specific size of company, into a specific industry? I'm also going to assume that you've got a handle on who your buyer personas are. These are the different roles, the different individuals that are within those ICP companies. You might sell into uh, chief HR officers. You might sell into enterprise architects. But I'm going to assume if I asked you who's your primary or secondary buyer persona, you'd know uh, who that is. And then thirdly, I'm going to assume that you've uh, accessed the dark funnel worksheet that is part of this power hour. Um, now, this should be on one of your team's laptops. Uh, maybe you've opened it up as a Google Sheet and you're all in it. But as we go through this workshop, there are two tabs and you're going to be filling in details into this. So make sure that you've got that before we get started. 
So with that, let's dive in to learning about the dark funnel and uh, how we can start to locate where our customers are hanging out. Let's think about buying a car. Now, whether you buy a new car or you buy a secondhand car, probably the last place you will go is the dealership. The places that you will go first will be to go and speak to your friends. Oh, what are you driving? I oh, saw so you're driving that. I'm thinking about getting this. What do you think about it? Do you know anyone that's driving one? Uh, you might have watched an episode of Top Gear or another uh, auto TV program. Uh, more commonly now, you might be watching YouTube channels where independent reviewers go and review and test drive cars. Or if you're of a certain age, you might still be getting magazines where you go and read uh, reviews or read in your news newspaper about reviews of cars. The key thing is here is that you are doing this research um, outside the field of view of the particular car dealership or car manufacturer because you want to go and educate yourself. You want to understand what other people think. You want to get a long list of all possible cars down to a short list. What's the fuel economy like? What's the ride like? What do people think about this car if I'm driving it? And only when you've really made your decision, maybe down to two or three cars, but really probably down to one, the one that you want, that is when you'll walk into the dealership. You'll know what model you want. You'll know what engine you want. You'll know what color you want. And importantly, you'll know what you should be paying. And so you're going into that engagement with the dealer, educated and empowered to have a sensible negotiating conversation. Now, why do we think it would be any different in a B2B environment? It's absolutely not. This is uh, the revenue acceleration flywheel, and it lays out all of the different capabilities that uh, a B2B organization needs to have to uh, deliver a great buyer experience to their customers. At the top here, we've got the 11 capabilities uh, that you need to exhibit in order to deliver that great experience to your prospects, your customers, and your partners. And the very first of them is the dark funnel. This is how do we ensure that when our buyers are doing exactly the same as that car purchaser was, uh, speaking to their peers, exploring, researching, how do we make sure that they are having a valuable and a great experience and learning about our organization? Gartner talk about buyer enablement as a concept, the, the requirement on vendors to support their buyers through their buying process. And Gartner talks about six different buying jobs that a buying group has to do in a company. Now, they don't have to do all of these in order, but nothing happens without identifying a problem. You know, we need to do something. There is a problem with the status quo, and we need to explore a way of solving that. So problem identification is the first one. Next is solution exploration. We know we've got a problem. What is out there that might solve this? It could be reconfiguring some tools that we've already got. It could be buying something else. It could be working with some partners. The next is requirements building. So we need to go and do something. What does this new thing we're going to buy need to do? The fourth is honing down on that short list of suppliers. We know what this thing needs to do. Does this supplier or these set of suppliers meet that requirement. Then we go down to validation. We know what we want to do. We want to choose the supplier. Are we absolutely sure that this is the right approach? And then the final one before actually signing a contract is making sure that everyone else is on board with your uh, decision. So these are a set of jobs that the uh, company needs to go through. And when we think about problem identification, this is where the dark funnel comes in. It's the set of places that your buyer goes to identify these problems that is outside of your field of view. When we think about the dark funnel, a good way of explaining it is the opposite. 
the light funnel, if you will. If we think about how marketing teams have worked over the last 10 or 15 years, it's very much been focused on attribution. How do I track where an individual lead or a customer, an opportunity has come from? I'll gate my content so that when anyone goes to our ebook, they fill in their name and email address. Uh, we will do paid social and we will know that when someone clicks on our ad exactly who they are. We'll run events or we'll syndicate our content or we'll ensure that people have to request a demo to see our product. Everything is about making the customer put their hand up and identify themselves. But as we know from the car dealership experience, this is the last place that someone comes to for information. Everything below the line is what we can call the dark funnel in a B2B environment. Uh, people are going to independent review sites. They're going to YouTube channels. They're listening to podcasts. They're signing up to independent newsletters. They're going to trusted partner content. These are all areas where they're educating themselves about what everyone else is doing. They're educating themselves on potential vendors. They're educating themselves on the size of the problems and how people are prioritizing. And they're educating themselves on the direction of travel that their industry is going to. And one of the most important ones of these is word of mouth. That is just the most powerful source of education and learning and advice that any buyer is going to take, just as we do in our own world as uh, consumers and individuals ourselves. Having thought about the dark funnel and all of these places that buyers exist, it's also important to consider that there is no such thing as a buyer in your organize, in your customers, uh, especially in a, a B2B environment that might be selling into enterprise or strategic accounts. Yes, there will be a, a user or a product owner of your product. Yes, there may be an executive sponsor or a buyer, and those may be the two people that you spend most of your time with. But outside of that field of view are some very influential roles. Uh, the CFO who can definitely say no to this purchase because there are other um, uh, important priorities. There's the lawyer who's not happy with your contracting terms. There's accounts payable who need preferential commercial terms. There's the security team, the CIO, there's the system integrator that needs to implement and support this product. All of these are in their own dark funnels, uh, networking with their own peers and colleagues. So what we want to do is to start thinking about where all of these individuals are hanging out. And here are some examples. Uh, one of the most prevalent, and we're going to look at this in a little bit more detail, our niche Slack communities. Um, let me just read through this question that comes from a Slack community uh, focused on revenue operations. Does anyone use digital sales rooms, content portals for your proposals and supporting material? If so, would you be so kind as to let me know which ones and provide some indicative prices that you pay? I've been tasked with getting some prices in double quick time so that we can add it to our list of nice to have technologies that we might want to bid for some budget for. So think about that question. That is a peer going to other peers to say, look, I don't really know a great deal about this, uh, this category, digital sales rooms, but can you help me build a short list and guide me through what I should be paying? Think back to the car dealership. Which car should I be driving? Which model and how much should I pay well before I get in touch with any of these vendors? So Slack communities, we're going to look at in a little bit more detail. But uh, WhatsApp, either one-to-one -one or communities. I know this is more relevant in uh, Europe, but it's picking up in the US. Uh, if you sell B2C, then you might see Discord channels, uh, Discord servers, uh, where teams are following similar approach to, to Slack. Uh, Reddit uh, has some pretty vibrant um, uh, subreddits for various uh, industries and categories. Uh, Twitter is very, very active, or X as I should call it now, very active with these kinds of discussions. 
one-to-one uh, -one messages between peers or ex-colleagues, and LinkedIn, where influencers are talking about the tech stack that they're using. In addition to that, think about offline networking dinners. Uh, if you're in the sales community, you might have heard of Pavilion and all of these uh, localized chapters bringing these people together. Uh, breakfast, uh, breakfast briefings that are being held around specific topics, um, events that are run by consulting partners uh, to advise them, uh, advise people on which direction to go, or ex-colleagues where people say, ah, now I know you're working at this company. What are you using? I saw that you've rolled out this uh, tech. In addition to that, think of other channels of communication. Uh, newsletters are becoming increasingly important, either free or paid, where influential uh, individuals are sharing their expertise. Podcasts, short form, long form podcasts, educating people on what others are doing in the sector. YouTube channels, advising people, this is what we're doing, this is what's working, this is how we rolled it out. And then in individual blogs as well from influencers sharing their experience. This is what your buyers are listening to and trusting. And this is the modern word of mouth. So what I suggest is search for each of your personas. So like we've looked at there, whilst the main buyer of your product may be, might be uh, in this example, a, uh, an HR uh, officer or an HR director, think around that, the people that need to implement your solution, the people that are going to pay for it, the people that are going to do technical support for it. Just do a simple Google, top HR Slack communities, top HR discords, you'll come up with a number of different um, uh, sites that will provide links into even more uh, lists of these uh, uh, Slack communities. And then you'll start to find these individuals, uh, individual communities. So here are just a couple of examples of uh, HR director focused ones. Uh, the one on the left is run by a platform called Lattice, 22,000 HR leaders that are talking to each other about what's top of mind for them, what their challenges are, and the technology and tools that they're using. The one on the right, similar, focused on HR, but run by Culture Amp. And then each of these Slack communities have a very similar format with different channels focused on questions, focused on hiring, and also tools and software. It really is about the individual roles communicating with each other. So you'll find communities for all of the different roles that you're selling into, whether they're technical, whether they're business, whether they're users of the tool, or whether they are um, executive sponsors and buyers. So that brings us to our first task. And so get ready because you're going to be doing some work. So I imagine I'm looking down on you and you're from the, from the television and you've now got hopefully your laptops you've got the worksheet uh, shared amongst you. And now we're gonna spend 15 minutes to start looking for these private communities. Get the dark funnel worksheet. Um, uh, it, it is a Google sheet, make a copy of it, and then share that copy out amongst the, the, the uh, individuals that are in, in the room here. And what you'll find is that there's uh, simple columns across the top, customer segment or your ICP, uh, who is the industry or the type of company that we're going to be um, uh, researching for, which is the individual buyer persona that we're going to be focused on, and then which are the communities that we're going to find and what type are they. And then you'll have a few other columns through in terms of uh, the URL um, and uh, who in your organization could be the person to go and uh, join this. Pick your primary buyer persona. Um, you can do this power hour, you can do this workshop again and again and again, but to stay focused for this 15 minutes, just pick one. If that's CHROs, if that's CFOs, pick one, and then between you, you can all do some research and consolidate it into the spreadsheet. If you all start going in different directions, then you're not gonna really be able to collaborate because you're gonna be running at different, uh, different tasks. So pick your primary buyer persona 
Uh, go and search for some of those online communities like I uh, show, HR director, Slack communities. But do the same thing for newsletters, uh, for in-person meetups, for one-off events. Um, maybe go to Amazon and look for books that are influential. Uh, search for podcasts on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts from. Uh, go to YouTube and search for um, that persona there as well. Build all of those out in the spreadsheet. You should easily be able to get 15 or 20 of these different communities in this 50-minute uh, exercise. And then for each of these, and it may be the same one for all because we're focused on the same buyer persona, but who in your company or if not in your company, in your extended network could join each of these groups? Now, the reason why I mention that is that most of these are very restricted to that specific role. To get into the HR director club, you need to be in an HR role and they'll be very um, uh, you know, conscientious about that. So it would be your HR director that would uh, join that as opposed to your VP of sales who, who would get blocked. And then having done that, then um, either at the end of this uh, workshop, you can then request access or have that individual request access or sign up to all of these uh, newsletters and online communities. So here we go. Working session number one, it's up to you. I'm gonna leave you for 15 minutes. I'm gonna leave this up on the screen. Your three questions, do we know where our customers hang out? Who in our company can join each of these communities? And then request access. And I'll jump back on again in 15 minutes and introduce the second part of our Power Hour. So good luck.
So you're about halfway through this task, uh, about seven minutes to go.
Okay, you're down to your last minute, so start wrapping up. Okay, well, well done. And I hope uh, you found some fantastic uh, communities, networking events, podcasts that you were not familiar with for your primary buyer persona. Uh, you can see that you could easily repeat that exercise for your secondary persona and any other supporting uh, personas around your core buying group. Understanding where those individuals are hanging out and then listening and learning from them over the coming weeks is gonna be absolutely critical to defining everything else that we're gonna do as we build out a better buyer experience for our customers. Now we're gonna dive into the second half of uh, the Power Hour. And we're gonna look at product review platforms. Now, if we consider that the first place that our buyers are hanging out is with uh, their peers and their friends and getting word of mouth, then one of the second exercises they want to do is just validate that they're not making any silly mistakes and that their friends or peers haven't sent them off down, uh, down the wrong route. And that is where product review platforms come in. Now, the leading product review platform of the day is G2. Uh, you just go to g2.com. And as they say on the website, it's where you go for software. Uh, there are some services on there, but it's primarily around uh, helping you to understand uh, which platforms are uh, right for your business and are well uh, revered and recommended by your peers and colleagues. For each of the categories that they have, uh, you'll find a grid like this. Now, you might be familiar with uh, a Gartner Magic Quadrant or a Forrester Wave. Um, those organizations um, provide uh, a, a great service, but as we know for a lot of them, it's very much pay to play. Uh, they go and do uh, the, the research and the analyst, and they tell you what, uh, what they think. With G2, you're really getting ratings directly from the customers themselves. And it works on a much more of a live basis rather than a Gartner or a Forrester who might issue a report once a year. Now, you can also then start to split this down by the size of your organization. So even if you're looking at data warehouses, for example, in this example, um, you can then say, right, well, I'm a small business. And actually, the advice may be slightly different. So a lot of buyers will use this as a sense check for the decisions um, that they've already, the emotional decisions that they've already made in their mind. Uh, am I uh, making the right choice here? I'm going to dive into one example, uh, Snowflake, just to show you what a good listing looks like. So this is Snowflake's listing on uh, G2. We can see that it's claimed. There's a little button in there, so they have claimed it. Um, they've taken the responsibility to put on a nice banner there. You can have videos at the top. We can see that there's a nice description here. As we scroll down, they've provided screenshots and um, some official downloads here. Now, the thing that I want to call out here is that if we go back to uh, Gartner's uh, buying jobs or buyer jobs, we talked about problem identification, solution exploration, uh, requirements definition being those or requirements building being those first three tasks that a buyer has to do. 
And let's take a look at the content that Snowflake is sharing here. Is it product, 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 or is it more education for the buyer? So we've got cloud data warehousing for dummies here. Okay, if you'd never heard of data warehousing, but someone had said, we really need to go and get this uh, platform, then you're gonna have the opportunity to learn a little bit about what data warehousing is, why it might be different to what you've got today and how to approach it. Um, in the official screenshots here, we've got you only pay for what we use, for what you use, and an education about how something that is quite complex in terms of pricing uh, is structured. So you are teaching through your product review platform and meeting buyers at where they are. As we scroll further down the Snowflake page, we get into these video rev reviews. Um, real human beings that are really using the platform, telling about their story, their experience, how they structured their team, how they prioritized their rollout. It really is learning from someone that is further on in the journey than you. And then if you want to go further down, uh, then that you've got additional written reviews and G2 makes this really easy to search based on keywords. So if you've got a particular challenge or an integration or a, 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 a country that you're trying to roll this out in, you type that in and you're gonna to start to get reviews that speak specifically to what you're looking for. So that was G2. Another one that I'd point you to is Gartner Peer Insights. Uh, now this is less uh, focused on the vendors being able to um, uh, own and update and control what's on their page. It's more about individual customer reviews rating. But it's up to you as a vendor to encourage your customers to go to places like G2, like Gartner Peer Insights, like Trust Radius, and encourage them to provide their experience to someone earlier on in their process. So that brings us to our second task in this Power Hour, and we are going to dive into product review platforms. You should still have the uh, Dark Funnel worksheet open, and I'm going to ask you to go onto the second tab. And here you'll see a similar set of columns where we can list out the product review sites that are relevant to your organization. You're gonna put your pages listing, and then you'll see a few columns along. Uh, have you claimed it? Have you got a banner or a logo up there? Have you got useful screenshots? Have you got videos? Have you got customer uh, references and testimonials? And what could you do to improve the buyer's experience on this page? So what we're going to be doing over the next 15 minutes, firstly, quickly define within your team which review platforms are relevant to your segment. Uh, they might not all be. Um, so G2, as I mentioned, is uh, predominant for software um, and, uh, uh, and technology platforms, some services. Uh, Trust Radius is another uh, one known in the States. Uh, Clutch, mainly focused on services. Uh, Captera, I've not listed here, or Trustpilot. Uh, more on B2C, but have a think through where your buyers are hanging out for your particular uh, product. And then take a look at your pages on those, but from a buyer's perspective, go in with a, a, a clean slate, like what is it that you are uh, learning from the page that you've provided? Is it just product, 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 or is it helping them to understand how to buy your product and services? Uh, and then finally, what could you do to better uh, support your buyer's needs? Could there be better content? Do you need to create new content? Could you get better uh, customer reviews and testimonials? Uh, how can you build that into your customer onboarding process so that you're getting these reviews um, from all of your customers? So here we go second 15 minute timer that I will bring up onto the screen. Review your listings on the product review platforms and consider what could you do to improve that content for your customers. Good luck and I will chat to you in 15 minutes.
So you're about halfway through this task, uh, about seven minutes to go.
Okay, you're down to your last minute, so start wrapping up. Well, well done. Uh, that brings us to the end of the second working session in this Power Hour. And I hope you were able to take a look at your product review listings with a really critical eye uh, from the perspective of your buyers and consider what you can do to improve that content for them. Uh, less talking about you and your products and more about them and how you can help them through their buying journey. So that brings us towards the end of this power hour. And I hope that through the two uh, tasks, you've found that uh, an excellent opportunity to collaborate amongst your team and to get your uh, thinking uh, working. Now, as we wrap up, have a think through how you can enable your customers and partners to spread the word on your behalf. We talked at the start about the dark funnel and how word of mouth is so important. In the dark funnel, customers do not want to be sharing your ebook. They don't necessarily want to be sharing your uh, PDF uh, product guide. They want to be sharing their own content because that's what's influential. So have a think through how you can generate a lot of that type of content for your customers, partners to share in these networks uh, that, and communities that they're part of. Uh, could you write something on your customer's blog or could your customer write something on your blog? Uh, could you feature on their podcast or YouTube channel or could you invite them to come and speak on yours? Could you work with them to uh, anonymize maybe their project plan or the roles and responsibilities or their requirements documents? Uh, things that would be valuable to others that your customer would then be, feel happy to share on their behalf. Here are three questions that you as a team can uh, ask yourselves as you start to think about where you are on this dark funnel uh, maturity journey. Ask yourself, are we aware of the private communities that our target personas use to engage with their peers? with their peers. And hopefully after this session, you can say partially to absolutely. We actively provide content and responses into our listings on product review platforms. Well, now you know where those product review platforms are and you've looked critically at your listings. Maybe we can move on to partially or absolutely. And finally, we enable our customers and partners to spread the word about our products. Um, as we start to think about how we can help our customers to spread that word on our behalf, maybe we can move that to partially and absolutely. So my promise to you was that in 60 minutes time, you'll have uncovered five locations where your buyers go to learn and have kicked off a plan to listen and to learn from them. And I hope that you've achieved that through the two workshop uh, periods that you've had. Look out for future power hours. As I said, the dark funnel is very much the first in this entire journey of 22 different capabilities. A couple of complementary uh, power hours will be ones around creating valuable buyer content that your uh, customers can share on your behalf. And then also defining your ICP and your buyer personas. So if you weren't 100% sure about whether you've got your buyer personas at lockdown, and take a look at that power hour and we'll dive into that in more detail. And all of the power hour content 
is covered in the Revenue Operations Playbook, uh, where I guide you through each of the 22 capabilities, 11 external and 11 internal. And you can find the Revenue Operations Playbook on Amazon. And for those of you that like listening, you'll find it on Audible as well. With that, good luck. Thank you for joining uh, the Power Hour. If it was your first one, I hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to seeing you in future Power Hours.